Poker is an incredibly fun game. You can win with a bad hand, but you can also lose with a really good hand. Is there an optimal strategy in poker? According to game theory, the answer is yes. And the algorithm that we're gonna use to do that is called counterfactual regret minimization. With variants of this algorithm, bots have actually successfully beaten some of the world's best poker players. First of all, a big shout out to Taskade for sponsoring this video. Taskade is a real-time organization and collaboration platform that lets you mind map, outline, and manage tasks for your project. Best of all, it's simple and it's free. So click on the link below, check it out. Let's dive into it. Counterfactual regret minimization. We're now in a domain of computer science called reinforcement learning. And the goal here is to get a computer, some sort of agent to learn what actions to take in a given environment based on what rewards or penalties they might've seen. Unlike traditional machine learning where you might have a picture of a cat put it through some sort of classifier and spit out a label, cat or dog, and you can check whether or not that label is correct. We don't actually know what the labels are. We don't know what actions to take. That's what the computer is supposed to figure out. In addition, in reinforcement learning, whatever action you take might affect the rest of you know, the states from there on. It might be a game, it might be training a robot to run in real life, and so on. Counterfactual regret minimization or CFR for short, comes from this territory of computer science. Let's plan out this project on Taskade. I'm gonna create a workspace for YouTube and create a subspace for this specific poker bot. Within this poker bot, I can create a project and here I can choose from a couple of different templates to organize everything, or I can just create a blank template, which is what I'm going to select. The first thing that we have to do is actually understand CFR and how it works. There are a couple of different types of CFR. Vanilla CFR is out there and Monte Carlo CFR is out there. What's really cool is this hierarchy feature. So these are actually subtasks of this CFR understanding task. CFR is a self-play algorithm, which means that it plays against itself in order to learn a game. Every single round, it reflects on what decisions were made during that round and figures out how to improve its strategy. And so after like a billion iterations, it will eventually converge to the optimal strategy. When we play poker, there are so many times when we're like, oh dang, if only I had raised a little bit, I could have gotten more money out of this guy. Or dang, like I really wish I had folded there then I wouldn't have lost $200. Regret is something that is so central to this game. And what this algorithm is trying to do, it's trying to measure how much regret comes with every single action. And then it says, okay, let's minimize it. If an action comes with very high regret, then this algorithm will say, hey, you probably shouldn't do that. So how do we even define regret? Regret doesn't quite have a number associated with it, right? Or does it? In poker, it's pretty easy to figure out, you know, in what cases somebody might regret something and what cases they wouldn't. If you win a lot of money, are you gonna regret that action? Probably not. On the other hand, if you lose a lot of money, yeah, you might regret that. So naturally, we can have the wins or losses of a round act as measures of regret. In order to show you guys how to actually calculate this regret, let's turn the game of poker into a tree. So at the very top, we have a node, and this node represents chance. Because when you get dealt cards, I mean, that's, that's just up to luck, right? Every single branch of that node represents one possible action that results from this chance player. Each of these card states, that represents another node in the tree. From there, you can either call, fold, or raise. So now these are more actions that we can create as branches from an individual node. And we have that for all the different nodes. Now, after we fold, well, that, you know, that's the end of our game. So that is what we call a terminal node. But if we call or if we raise, then we create another node and then 
the opponent has to make a decision. Their decisions also get recorded as branches in the tree. And then we have another chance node for the flop and then another player one node and then another player two node and so on until we get to the very end of the game. Assuming both players have either called or raised or checked or something to keep going, at the very end of the game, we have a showdown. And this showdown, when we compare the two cards, one of the players will win and the other will lose. And that number is our utility. By utility, we just mean the value of taking that one specific route. So we can keep creating these branches until the very end, we will always reach some sort of terminal node. And that terminal node has a value associated with it because either we've lost money or we've won money. And if we win money, well, that's a positive value. If we lost money, that's a negative value. Once we've gotten this tree and we've gotten all of the end values, we can start going back and measuring the regret of our actions. Now, regret just means how much better or worse could I have done if I had taken this other action? So for example, in this specific tree, let's say I'm player one and I at first checked. And so at the very end of the game, I got $25. Okay, well, what would have happened if I had raised instead? We looked down, I would have gotten $100. Man, I should have raised instead. And we're gonna actually encapsulate that by a regret of 100 minus 25, so 75. We can do this for all of these hypothetical actions. So at this bottom node, what if I had folded? I only would have gotten 50. What if I had raised more? I would have gotten 120. So now the regret at this node is minus 50 for folding and then plus 20 for raising. CFR explores each branch of the tree and calculates regret values at every single decision point. A higher regret means take it more often, and a lower regret means stay away. Now, based off of all of these regret values, CFR will go and update its strategy and improve it over and over again for every single iteration. That's the general gist of the algorithm. So now let's return to task A to see what's next. So we need to create some abstractions for our game. And this includes action abstractions, such as betting, raising, folding, and so on as well as card abstractions. Just to jot down the rest of the tasks, once we have these components, we can put it together into a CFR bot, and then we'll need to train this bot. So that just means iterating over this algorithm many, many times so that we can converge to this optimal policy. One really awesome feature about Taskade that I wanted to show you guys is this feature where you can toggle different views of this to-do list. So here we can look at it as a board, as an action table, a mind map, and then an org chart. All right, so let's talk about these abstractions. According to some paper that I read online, there are actually 10 to the 71, 10 to the 71 power 10 to the power of 71 game tree nodes in a game of two player, no limit Texas Hold'em. To give you a sense of how big that is, there are 10 to the 80th power atoms in the universe. That's a lot. I think that even Google would probably have trouble storing all that information. Referring back to Taskade, we see that we have action abstractions and also card abstractions. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Starting off with the action abstractions, let's say that there's $20 in the middle and you're betting $5. Well, what about $6 or $4? Do those numbers really make a difference? Not really, right? But if you bet $20, well, that makes a difference or $40, so on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cluster these approximately similar bet sizes into a bucket. In order to get which bucket an action falls under, well, we can just round. For my bot, we had some storage limitations, so we only used five different actions. We had one for calling, one for checking, one for raising two thirds of the pot, one for raising twice the size of the pot, and then one for going all in. Now let's talk about the card abstraction because this part gets a little bit juicier. What do I even mean by card abstraction? Because 
this is less quantifiable. If I have in my hand ace three, and let's say the community cards are ace king 10 and there's no flushes anywhere. Well, if I had, you know, ace two or ace four, maybe even ace seven, I would probably play these fairly similarly because I have top pair aces and then like a pretty crappy card, right? But let's say I had ace 10. Now I have two pair. I have two aces and two tens in my hand, which makes it a stronger hand. So what is this line of like, does it matter or does it not? There are complicated methods that you can read about for these state abstractions, but the most simple and straightforward is to just create a handcrafted abstraction. Essentially, we can bucket these based on, did we hit top pair for whatever cards are on the table? Or did we hit a flush? Did we hit a full house? Because every single time we've hit these really good hands, we probably wanna play them pretty similarly. In addition, we can incorporate draws in this metric, which means that, you know, if we have one more card that would complete our flush or our street, we can also account for that. There are a couple of papers that I actually read about CFR, so I'm going to go and include those links below and include them on my flowchart. I can tag them with the hashtag paper, so later on I can search for whatever papers I have listed. In addition to that, I can also tag people. So I'm gonna tag myself right here. We have checked off a bunch of these tasks so we can collapse them for better viewing. And we see that the next step, for the moment of truth, now we put all these things together and we start coding up our algorithm. So this algorithm is recursive because we're traversing this tree. So at every single node, we're calling this algorithm. Basically, if it's a terminal node, then we just wanna compute the utility, which is the reward or the loss that you get at that node. If it's a chance node, we're gonna sample an action and we're gonna repeat the algorithm for whatever node that we get to after that action. And then finally, if we're a player node, we can test out each of the actions and then recurse using this algorithm until we reach that final node of the tree where we can get the value and then calculate regrets based off of those values. Then the algorithm finally takes those regrets, goes back, looks at the strategy, and incorporates those to improve our strategy. With variants of this algorithm, bots have actually successfully beaten some of the world's best poker players. Back in 2017, there was actually a 20-day poker tournament between Labratus, which is a poker bot that used this algorithm that played against four of the most renowned poker players in the world. Before the tournament began, there was a betting market on who would win, and the odds were four to one against Libratus. Three days into the tournament, after Libratus had won every single day, the odds were even. But at the very end of the 20 day tournament, Libratus won with a 99.98 statistical significance. That's huge. That means that the, the chance that Libratus won by luck is 0.02%. The results from that tournament are right here. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, learned something new. Go click on that Taskade link below, download Taskade because it has helped me, it can help you, it's easy and it's free. Go download Taskade to help you in your project of building a poker bot. Peace.